Yes, yes, yes. I can already hear you guys saying that Goku saves the universe, saves the world, and has shown time and again to be there for his family. But there is one thing in the brand new Dragon Ball Super manga chapter that really grinded my gears about Goku. And maybe it's because I'm a family man, I'm a family guy, but uh, yeah, it really upset me. But before I get into that, I actually want to talk about the positives of today's chapter the Dragon Ball Super manga chapter and uh, there really is one main one and that is Maki. Yo, where has this girl been all my life? She completely made this chapter. Of course, she was the one driving the plot forward. She was the one making the storylines, but her attitude, her deviousness, her 21st century feminism, everything about this girl screams new bay. This is the Black Squad's new Bay. She, as the moment I first saw her, is top tier. Like, she's top tier just from her design. And now that we've gotten a full chapter of her, like, literally being the main character, she is cute. She is adorable. She is absolutely Bay, and I cannot stand anymore. So that's why I can't be too upset with some of the things that were issues with this chapter. Because ultimately, Maki really did Toyotaro some favors here and made the chapter really enjoyable for all the scenes that she was in. Now, now, if you're trying to go for in-depth analysis as to what the world actually means and world building when it comes to the powers that Goku and Vegeta have with Beerus and Whis, yeah, a lot of the stuff doesn't make sense, especially with the Dragon Balls, because now the Dragon Balls are inert, which would mean somebody would have used them, which is not the case in the Moro arc. So maybe we'll see that off screen, or maybe they're saying because they were using the Broly movie that they are inert from there, which means that this only took place like all this has been taking place in a year which is crazy to think about but yeah the other thing is i like that the entire plan is to basically throw goku and vegeta at planet cereal and granola granola already has a vendetta against the saiyans and now he's being told that these are saiyan assassins so i do like that entire storyline i like seeing bulma and end of boo clothing i liked Chi Chi a lot in this chapter and actually even though she is kind of what made me point out the issue with just the characterization of Goku in this chapter I definitely liked it because it also shows where her mind is at where she is in this relationship with Goku and on top of that like she has a really cute moment where she's asking for money because obviously she's looking for money for the services that Goku is going to provide and she doesn't want like no flimsy space cash and that is when she's offered sky gold and not even just sky gold she's offered her own weight in sky gold and Chi Chi's like well let me start fanning myself up then it was really adorable honestly i liked chi chi i liked bulma i liked seeing the entire scene with zuno but of course that was more to maki's sake and i kind of like the fact that elect has this one member of the family that he says can surpass frieza and the dude's like ready to take charge he wants to fight some strong characters but Alec has him in his back pocket because he doesn't want him to die because that's the only chance that he has to defeat the tyrant. Alright, that's enough positives. Okay, so my main issue with this is Goku has not been home for months. Now, you may think that this line is like, it's fine because, I mean, the whole Moro arc, he was training, he was being a galactic patrol cop, and he was doing all these things, but as soon as that was over, he literally went straight back to Beerus' planet and trained for an undisclosed amount of time. The entire time that actually this was taking place, that the uh, heaters were going to Zuno, he was training on that planet to try to get Ultra Instant. So there's like a mini time skip in this chapter, as well as the time that has passed from the very beginning of this manga and Goku has not been around for months and Chi Chi's like I mean it's about time for him to come back I mean our money is running out he needs to come out and get a job and so I think that this is proof to confirm my hilarious title for this video that this is confirmed with proof Goku really doesn't care about his family and it's not just Chi Chi you gotta think 
Goten is part of his family. You don't even see Goten in this chapter. Where the hell is he? Is he not living at home? Like, does he? did he go off to find himself for a year? Like, where the hell is Goten? He's not there. He has no father. And he's a young boy. He's not like... Gohan, who already had his dad for a little little bit here and there, and understood at a certain age that Goku wasn't going to be there. Goten is starting off almost fresh with Goku from the Buu Saga. Throughout Dragon Ball Super, he the very beginning, he gets a little bit of time with Goku farming, and then that's it. Goten has stayed relatively the same size and the same age for a very, very long time. So the only conclusion that I have is that he's still a young boy and his father doesn't really give a shit about him, honestly, and would rather go train. And that brings me to Chi-Chi. She doesn't care about him either. It seems that she doesn't care. I mean, she may love him at a certain extent, but she doesn't really care about intimacy with Goku or a relationship with Goku or a friendship with Goku, which is very important in a marriage, specifically one that's been going on this long. She's just like, Goku is the workhorse. You need to make some more money. And that's all she cares about. She cares about the money to keep the lights on, keep the house running. I'm assuming keep an education for Goten. So she's really thinking about this fiscally. And so there's really no romance or doesn't seem like there is. And for anybody who's saying that Chi Chi's not neglected, that Goten is not neglected, you're out of your mind. They absolutely are. She confirms he hasn't been there for months. And it's been a while since the Moro arc as well. And it also has been a time skip on top of that. So it has been a while since Goku has been there for his family. And that's like the thing that really upsets me. Because we did get a lot of Vegeta in Dragon Ball Super caring about his family. Which was great. And I like that aspect of it. I mean, they're old dudes, man. They should be caring about their family. Specifically, I like the Vegeta is because he didn't in Dragon Ball Z. But Goku, I mean, come on, man. Goku needs to like put his family first and I like that they had hinted that Chi Chi is really the only one that can move Goku and have him come back home which I can see but uh, I mean I'll never forget the, the the part in Dragon Ball Super where he was begging to leave Earth and Chi Chi was like committing abuse toward him physical abuse toward him to keep him there like it's just not a healthy relationship honestly and this chapter outlines that the most that it's not a healthy relationship between goku and chi chi and it is definitely not a healthy relationship between goku and goten but i did like that uh, now goku's a mercenary i mean if his wife needs money she can literally just throw him at the nearest bad guy, the nearest threat, and then Goku can take them out for some money. I'm surprised Goku hasn't been doing this from the very beginning. I mean, he's been doing farming, but that's not what he likes to do. He likes to train, he likes to fight, and now he's got the perfect opportunity to face off against uh, bad guys or strong opponents and have an excuse for it because he's making money, and it's like killing two birds with one stone. I, I, I do like that we're finally getting... Uh, mercenary Goku essentially uh, Mandalorian Goku I do like that and besides that the only other thing that I didn't like about this chapter was that um, we're getting this hint that Vegeta's Hakai could be possibly as strong as Goku's Ultra Instinct which I don't see how that is even possible seeing as how no God of Destruction is stronger than their angel at all and they're all trying to do Ultra Instinct they're all trying to train an Ultra Instinct and angels can do it off the bat so they're still trying to learn angel techniques and at the same time Beerus is like yeah that don't, don't worry about those we're gonna try to focus on what makes us strong and what makes us strong is Hakai so I didn't like that whole story art because it doesn't make any sense that Vegeta would go Hakai and pushed into believing that that is going to be stronger than Ultra Instinct when that is obviously not the case although I do like the rivalry between Beerus and Whis could we get a God of Destruction versus Angel War or something along those lines or God of Destruction rebelling against the Angels no because Dragon Ball Super would never do that they would never ever do that they they i don't have any hope for dragon ball super doing anything too crazy and making the universe change to any certain extent so you would have to wait for fan mangas or fan animations to get those cool storylines but again the chapter it was all right again maki if she wasn't in there if it was just a big dude doing all this conniving and manipulating stuff then the chapter wouldn't be as entertaining but maki really held it all together so um curious to see the interaction between granola goku and vegeta although it doesn't seem like a fair fight 
Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this chapter. And if you made it to this point of the video, you are now part of the hashtag end of video squad. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Make sure to drop that comment with that hashtag for a chance to be featured in my next video. Today, I'm going to be responding to Freezer Burn Caustic. This will be the fight of the anime crossover fights of the century. Trunks versus Sasuke would amazing fight not gonna lie but if we're talking about dragon ball versus naruto shippuden i definitely watch vegeta versus naruto but that's my opinion uh, vegeta would completely kill naruto because he would have no patience and wouldn't play around with him or hopefully wouldn't play around with him so he would obviously kill him if uh, that was the case but if they were both leveled off i don't know who would fight honestly if they were both the same power level i have no idea who would come out on top anyway let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this, this is going to be black scape signing off Take care, guys. Subscribe for more content.